All right, so principles of design and elements of art. Uh, basically, these at at Cecil you don't necessarily take uh, certain foundational art classes. Um, if you were to go to a four year school, um, they you would be forced to. <laughs> pretty much every art major ends up having to take two uh, D design, and basically what it is is it's a course where you you make a lot of little nothings. Uh, you make a lot of really simple, simple, simple artwork that kind of boils stuff down to its more basic, fundamental elements, right? It's almost like learning to, to do addition before you start doing complex, you know, uh, mathematics. It's, it's, it's understanding how everything drives from one, uh, from these fundamental things. Um, so what I'm going to do is because you don't really get much of that uh as part of the web class here i'm just going to basically discuss the principles and design uh principles of design and elements of art um so they're just two separate categories but they kind of come together and normally what we do and this is and this is for all art be it uh fine art or graphic art uh you would see that people uh when they describe a work they'll usually describe it using these terms um so this is very generalized you'll see as we go through the course that they'll become more and more specific to web uh these are just very vague terms but it's good to know um you can apply these if you go to a, a museum but you can also apply these if you're looking at um you know some sort of uh, web page that you think looks particularly uh nice okay um so i'm just going to kind of go down the line and more or less read what the descriptions are. So uh, these are the elements of art. Uh, the first one is form. Basically, it's the illusion of a three-dimensional shape. So you can see here, I made like uh, vases or vases or whatever you want to call them. Uh, basically, it just makes something uh, looks like it has uh, 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 a three-dimensional uh, uh, a shape uh, um, that it, it, it uh a lot of times it'll involve uh, linear or aerial perspective. And what that means is that uh, if you were to do a drawing of something and you draw for shortening in that object, meaning that the object gets smaller as it goes away, that is a, a form of linear perspective. Have you ever heard of one point perspective? Basically, the idea is that things have a vanishing point and so they get smaller or things will be in front of other things. Those are things that are generally considered linear. Uh, aerial perspective are things where... Um, as you see things that are farther away, it deals more with like color and saturation. So things that are farther away will become less saturated, right? If you see mountains off in the distance, they always have kind of a grayish blueness to them. There's less contrast within its forms. Um, it's not as vibrant, uh, things like that. So that's more of an aerial perspective thing. Uh, but generally just, just the illusion of, you know, making something look like it's, it's, you know, real world. Um, line is basically a path between two points. You probably already know what this is. Um, the only part I really want to make about this is that line doesn't have to be like an absolutely explicit line. Like you can see this side of here, right? This is a line. Line is also formed by the edges of things, right? So a shape. So this is a shape, but there is a line being formed by its outside here. Okay, so that's also a line. Um, in fact, actually, there is no such thing as a line because even this line here is actually a shape because if it was just a straight line and nothing else, you wouldn't be able to see it because there'd be no thickness to it. Um, but line can be uh, any number of things. Uh, if you have a photo and there's one person looking at another person, you will follow the eye of one person looking at the other person. That creates a line, right? It creates an implicit line. There's lines within compositions where if you see someone pointing, um, I'm sure you've probably seen The Last Supper, right, with Jesus. And if there's uh, the vanishing point, right, because it's one point perspective, all draws towards his head and it draws you in. Those are implicit lines that are kind of pulling you into a work. Uh, line is very important because it's basically, um, it's, it's how you're going to move. It's one of the tools to move your viewers eyes around a piece. Uh, in our case, obviously it's going to help us move, uh, through our composition, uh, on our site. Um, color is color. You probably know color, uh, different colors have different psychological effects, right? So red, generally you think of passion, yellow, you generally think of things that are like kind of happy. Uh, green is kind of weird because it can make you think of illness. It can also make you think of life. It can also make you think of money. Um, uh, blue usually is like wisdom. It's coolness. It's softness. Uh, it's cold. Uh, and purple usually, uh, besides it being expensive, that's partly why royalty used it. But the other reason was because it was meant to be a combination of, of, of red and blue. So you had like, you know, vigor, but you also had, um, you know, uh, coolness of mind, like, uh, judgment. Um, so that's why purple was very popular. Um, value is light to dark. So, right. Uh, black is really 
strong value, very dark, uh, and white would be light. Okay, so generally speaking, most of the time in a composition, you want to have the full range all the way from black all the way to white. You don't want to have whole large areas of white and have whole large areas of black. You want to try and use it throughout space. Uh, normally when we talk about that, we talk about negative and positive space. So the positive space would be the vase here itself, and the negative space is the area around it. One of the things you got to get used to doing is not just concentrating on the positive space. You want to concentrate on the negative space as much. Um, sometimes we call it like white space, uh, particularly when we do in graphic design, they'll call it white space. And the idea is uh, if you want something to stick out, the more space that you give it, uh, the more that object will stick out. Typically, you want to try and balance the two where you don't want to have too much positive space or too much negative space. It'll become uh, more boring. It'll either seem too sparse or too crowded. Um, but you don't look at just what the object is. Look at the area around the object as well. Texture is basically what the name implies. It gives the, it gives the feeling that there's a, um, like a roughness to it, that there's a surface. Um, this is obviously more important when you're doing painting and things. Uh, but another way I look at it is it also breaks up the space. So if you look at, let's say, this vase, right, it takes you about half a second to see it, right, to, to look at it and understand it and, and to process it. But if you look at something with texture, it actually breaks the space up and it takes you longer visually to look at this. And you can utilize that as a tool as well. So a lot of times just breaking up a space, uh, breaking up a space, uh, uh, breaking up space will actually, uh, you know, you can you can move the eye quicker or slower through an area. Uh, so it doesn't have to be like absolutely explicitly like, oh, it looks like you could touch it. Um, it can also just mean basically breaking it up. Like even if you look at this with color, this is sort of texture because of the fact that it's breaking up and it's, it's forcing you to, to look through each part. Uh, it takes longer than if this was just a solid shape. OK, um, so some principles of design. Uh, first one is balance. Uh, it's the visual way of an artwork. So it can be symmetrical or asymmetrical. So if I had two vases right next to each other and like this one was like the exact same thing, uh, it would be balanced um, by doing this like I have here. It's almost like a yin yang. Right. Uh, so it's asymmetrical, but it's sort of balanced because of the fact that this is up higher. Um, so it sort of works in that regard. Um, contrast is just uh, you probably know what that means. It's what it literally means. The the difference in value or uh, other, uh, you know, principles um, between two uh, things. Generally speaking, the more contrast you produce uh, within an element or within a composition itself, uh, oftentimes more appealing. A uh, good example of this is like character design. If you take a character, um, you know, if you want to make a character look really smart, right, you exaggerate you, you, and you would make the head really large. But that's not all that you have to do. You actually have to make the body small. Um, it's not just about the one element because you need the contrast of a big head against a small body. If you're going to make a character look really strong, you actually don't make the arms big. What you do is you make the chest big and you make the legs small. And honestly, you can even make the arms small. That doesn't actually matter. Um, but you need to have something big against something small in order to create kind of like appeal and, and interest. Uh, emphasis, it just means drawing your attention to more, one element more than another. Uh, a really common way of doing this is through color, right? So I have a red vase. Your eye goes right here first. Uh, but emphasis can be used in any number of ways. Uh, for instance, if you look at this text right here, right? The first word you look at is the one that's um, thicker, that's, that's bold. That draws emphasis. Um, an element that's larger will draw emphasis. Uh, if you look at this in, uh, in general, the first thing you're going to look at is the image. That draws emphasis. So there's a lot of different ways of doing it. Uh, but the idea is, th is that you're trying to draw people into a specific area. Uh, movement is the illusion of making something move. Pretty obvious. Uh, pattern just means you're repeating the same uh, element or object or component uh, over uh, many times. This is very useful. Uh, often for web design and page layout and graphic design and that sort of stuff, because what we'll try to do in order to create um, consistency so you feel that everything has um, unity, which you'll see down here, uh, you'll use pattern, right? So like uh, I always you always use the same, um, you know, font uh, type, right? And you'll you'll always use the same colors and like the page number is always in the top left and you can always see the, you know, the name of the author on the bottom right or something like that that helps kind of that pattern will help, um, you know, carry the, the, the viewer through it. Rhythm is basically the idea um, of moving through a piece of artwork at different times. It's, uh, I like to look at it like music, right? So if you look at music, um, there's sort of a pattern to it, right? When they have a beat, 
but it's it's interrupted, right? So it'll be like fast, fast, slow, fast, fast, slow, slow, fast, fast, slow, slow. You know, um, just you know, think about someone picking a guitar or something. Um, but there's a variation in it, and it creates interest. Um, it's the same idea uh, inside of a piece of artwork. You want to have variation within it uh, because then you're you'll when you're looking through it, you'll look faster and slower and faster and slower. Um, uh, unity is the idea that you use some sort of element to kind of make everything, even if there's variety, which I didn't, is there no variety in here? I thought variety was one. I don't know, that should have been there, I would thought, but, um, <laughs> uh, unity basically is the opposite of variety. Variety is obviously having a whole plethora of different things and what have you. And even in this, you kind of see a little bit of variety, but there's a unity in the fact that like, it's only the same colors, uh, it's the same objects. So it makes things even though they might be disparate, um, seem, uh, you know, uh, uh, homogenous to, to, to feel together. Okay. Um, and that's really important, uh, definitely with page design and things like that. Uh, oftentimes you're going to find when you're trying to come up with designs is that you're always trying to balance unity versus variety. If you, you can make something very, very unified, uh, you can take something, uh, like let's say a newspaper and you take all the pictures out and it's just text. So it's just black and white text. You'll notice it's very unified. It all looks like it goes together. The problem is it gets really boring. Now you could go on the other opposite end of that and do variety. And you could have, you know, this title's blue and this one's pink and that one's orange. And, you know, the text up here is this. And then there's a picture over here. And then this is a picture, like a real picture over here and clip art over there. Now that's a whole ton of variety, but there's no unity in it. And so it makes it difficult to consume. Uh, and it, it's off-putting. So it's, it's a constant balance between those two things, because if, if you have uh, too much unity, it could get boring. But if you have too much, if you have too much variety, it, it becomes, you know, disconnected. Uh, so you kind of want to balance those two aspects together. Um, uh, OK, so that's this section. And the next I'll do a tutorial on that. Oh, I already have one. Never mind. There's that one. OK, uh, alternatives. Uh, yeah, so you can watch this video tutorial on basically how to do these things. For the most part, you are really only going to probably need to know how to do this sort of stuff um, in order to complete, uh, to, in order to understand uh, Photoshop. And you can follow this tutorial if you don't know how to. If you already know how to Photoshop, then don't even worry because this is very basic. Um, if you don't have Photoshop at home, because this is not a Photoshop class, I would suggest if this is the, the career path that you want to follow, I would... Um, learn Photoshop and use that because it's just industry standard and it's going to be better than other options. Uh, if that is not something uh, that you want to do and you're just a programmer or, you know, you're just taking this one off or whatever, you can use these programs. Um, so these are just like kind of um, alternatives. So one is Pixlr. So I'm just click on that and you can kind of see here. Uh, let's open the Pixlr edit. I don't know what Pixlr X is. Interesting. Okay. So you create a new image and you can choose the size. Okay. Or you can open an image and basically it's just like Photoshop. Um, so even if you watch that tutorial, you'll see it's run a little bit slow right now. I think cause I'm running the, this here. Uh, but basically it has all of, you know, adjustments and it's got filters. It's very much like Photoshop and it's all right inside the browser and then you can save it and you can export it. It's a little bit clunky. Uh, but if you're hard up and you need to like, you know, do some things, you can do them in here. Okay. So that's one option. Uh, let's go ahead and leave that page. Another one's logo maker. So this is really, really simple. This is only really good at making, you can watch this video if you want, uh, basic things. So, uh, what you can do is I can take this and say like, I'll take that and then I'll make like, I don't know, red and I could draw, oops, shapes. Why are you not giving me my shapes? There we go. Make a square and then I can scale it and rotate it. Right. And then I can take a circle and put that up here and basically just take all these shapes. And then when you're done, you can actually save it. Uh, and so you can make like little logos and things. OK, um, there's actually quite a bit that you could do. So I could take like, oh, they added some new ones. Take this and I'll make this one white. So it looks like it's cut in. You know, you could see how you can it looks like a submarine helmet. Right. So you could see how you could kind of combine these in order to make uh, a very simple logo. They also have, if you want, let's say I want to do hamburgers, right? Hamburgers. I could search for it. And they already have all these pre-made ones. See all five of them? There should be like a million. I don't know where the rest of them are. Where's all my hamburgers? That's lame. Okay, so I'll grab this hamburger. And you can see you can put it in here. I can change the color. I can add it to mine if I want or just use this. Uh, and then you save it. And what they'll do when you go to save it, 
is it'll let you also um, you can download the low resolution file. That's kind of annoying. And then you have to um, give credit. Uh, they'll give you the a thing to um, copy. Okay. Uh, so that's like a really nice kind of quick if you need to make a logo kind of thing. And it's all again in the browser. Uh, it's good for like, you know, if you're trying to make buttons that kind of look like a finger or like a spark or something, you could probably bang them out with this uh, pretty good. Um, the last one's GIMP, and this is like a shareware that's meant to be as an alternative to Photoshop. I'm honestly not a huge fan of it, but it's been, I mean, this was out when I was in school, so I don't know if they've, I don't know what improvements they made with it. Uh, I'm not a fan. <laughs> uh, but you can download it. This is like a, you have to install it in the whole nine yards, but I think, I don't know, do they have, oh, they do have, for, okay, so they have it for OS, Linux, and they have it for Windows. So, um, just, it's freeware that's meant to be as kind of similar to Photoshop as possible, so. It's another app you can use. You can just click on these and you can, you can see them. All right. So those are some options that you may or may not feel like using. Uh, it's kind of up to you. Uh, like I said, I would use Photoshop for the most part. Um, so the next assignment is to uh, do the biography page adjustment. Um, what you're going to want to do is make sure you got your basic file folder structure. You're just going to add on to your last thing, right? Uh, so in this case, what you're going to do uh, is you're going to uh, convert your CSS from any inline that you have to um, internal. Uh, you're going to fix your uh, images. Um, uh, so like the size of them, if you need to crop them or add alpha or anything like that. And make any kind of general adjustments uh, that we might have suggested during class. So you have to make internal CSS. So take all of your stuff that was inline and make it internal. You're going to take uh, your images and make sure that they're the correct um, format, size, all that business. I don't want to see pictures that are really large that you actually only show small. And I don't want to see small pictures that you blow up large. They should be the exact size that they're supposed to be. All right. And then I'm just going to generally look and see, you know, how your thing looks so far. All right. And then I'll have a video tutorial on how to do that um, down here. All right. Uh, and that is it.